Well, that was great. Thank you, Duane. And thanks, everybody, for, I know, we invite you here. You think you're going to come and listen to a bunch of really interesting talks and chill and drink coffee, and we put you to work. Um, so I want to thank you. I'm sorry maybe that was unexpected, but I want you to know that we really, really appreciate and I really hope that you enjoy the coffee as payment for your work. Um, so uh, I actually next have the great pleasure to introduce Helene Gale. She's the CEO of McKinsey Social Initiative. As you heard earlier, she served on the Consensus Committee. And uh, this is a nonprofit organization that implements programs that bring together varied stakeholders to address complex global social challenges. As the inaugural CEO, Dr. Gale is setting direction and building the organization. And previously, she was president and CEO of CARE USA a leading international humanitarian organization with approximately 10,000 staff whose poverty-fighting programs reached over 80, or 97 million people in 87 countries. I think Helene loves our children, too. That's a lot of people. <laughs> um, She's an expert on global development, humanitarian, and health issues. She spent 20 years with the Centers for Disease Control, focusing on combating HIV AIDS. She also served as the AIDS Coordinator in Chief of the HIV AIDS Division for the U.S. Agency for International Development. She directed the HIV TB Reproductive Health Program at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And she's been named one of Forbes' 100 Most Powerful Women. Um, in leadership, uh, powerful women, foreign policies, magazines, top 100 global thinkers, and Newsweek's top 10 women in leadership. She's author authored numerous articles on global and domestic uh, public health issues, including poverty alleviation, gender equality, and social justice. She has her BA in psychology from Barnard and an MD from UPenn, MPH from Johns Hopkins, and she's a board certified pediatrician. So, I think you can all understand now why we asked her to give us a call to action. So let's. <laughs> Amazing accomplishment. Uh, thanks so much for that uh, kind introduction. Um, as you can see, I've had a long career. So the real reason they asked me to do this is because I'm older than dirt and have been around <laughs> um, a lot of different arenas. Um, I thought I was starting at 245, so I still was in the process of uh, gathering my thoughts, and then all of a sudden we push the schedule up. So this may be a bit random, and um, um, you know, and when when we talked about what this call to action is, I, I guess in a lot of ways it's trying to give feedback to Robert Wood Johnson as the sponsors for what are some of the areas that you can probe, um, but also a little bit of a summary and what were some of the things that maybe um, stood out the most for me uh, as I was listening to some of this. And, you know, as um, was noted in my background, I've kind of had this fairly somewhat nonlinear career, starting out as a pediatrician, um, but really going into medicine for the very reason that Jim started out his talk with, that, you know, for me it was a way of, a, of addressing social justice, um, ended up, so it wasn't surprising that I migrated to public health, um, HIV, which I spent a lot of time working in, really is one of those areas that wraps science and um, societal equity issues uh, as very much part of it, and then went on to look at global poverty in, a, in the broader sense, and really for 10 years lived out the social determinants of health in the work that, that we did at CARE. And so I just say that to say a little bit of, you know, kind of how I come to this and why uh, as I was saying to several people earlier, I think this moment of um, really looking at the culture of health and looking at it as a movement, uh, to me, is one of the most exciting things in my professional career. And so, uh, again, I just uh, applaud the efforts in doing this. And I think, you know, while we've talked a lot and, and in public health, we talk a lot and have talked a lot and talked around the social determinants of health, I think the fact that we are finding a language to talk about that um, and to really put that in action, I, I believe that a new day is coming and that we really are on the 
uh, cusp of turning this around in ways that we haven't done before. So, you know, I think this is profound, a profound moment and profoundly important in, in terms of um, where we are at this moment in time. So let me just say a few of the things that, that for me, I think really st stood out. And, and again, these are going to be perhaps in no real organized fashion. But, you know, starting out um, the morning, we heard a lot about this whole notion of, of brain science and how important it was to better understand what the early environment and early childhood environment really does for lifelong and long term. And so I think that's an area where I would like to see more research and really more thinking about what, what is that moment, what are some of the the issues there, what, uh, what more can we learn about that. Um, you, we then, you know, there a lot of discussion, uh, and, and one of the things that, that hit me in one of the discussions earlier was the notion of how well we understand deficit models, but how we don't understand the issues of resilience. And so, uh, again, another area where I think focusing less on some of what we know about what doesn't work, and can we take some of the outliers? I um, digress a moment, but I don't know if anybody read this story, uh, this book that really struck me. Uh, it was The Tragic Short Life of Robert Pease. Um, it, people may have read that, and it was about a young, a young man who broke all expectations, went on to be a brilliant um, student at Yale, and then ended up going back to his home environment, um, getting into drug culture and, and, and dying. He was somebody who seemed like he had broken out of um, a certain environmental factor. So he was an outlier to a certain extent, but then um, ultimately wasn't. I think we need to know more about what, who are the outliers, what are the factors that um, uh, actually condition people for success, and then what are some of the factors that we don't successfully uh, target. So I think this notion of, of both deficit but also resilience is an important one. I was struck, and, and this came up oftentimes, um, the role of business. I think it's an area that we don't think enough about, and it goes to some of the comments earlier around collective impact and how are we working across sectors. But I think there's some real opportunities, and Robert, I think, is gone, but I think there's some real opportunities today where the whole um, ESG, environmental sustainability, responsibility movement in, in um, business, has become a, a much stronger part of long-term thinking about business and how to create social value along with creating economic value. So I think there's a time um, in history, a moment right now, where looking at that, including looking at the investor community and how do you bring in incentives for people to think more and bring health uh, into that, the role of the military, and, and this came up in a couple of comments. We know that the military has been one of the great societal equalizers in a way, and we often talk about the health and, and, and our efforts in public health and only think about the civilian community. And I think that we have a lot to learn from the military and, and um, uh, military community and military health community, but I think there's a lot more that there, a lot more bi-directional learning that could be done. Um, uh, data, hugely important, and, and several, several of the speakers talked about the integration, and, and it was really exciting to hear about what's happening in terms of integrating social um, indicators into health databases, but I think we need to go in the other direction. Are we looking at um, other systems, what, be it education, be it agriculture, nutrition, be it uh, planning, et cetera, um, environmental and looking at what health indicators. So I just think that whole role of data and how are we using data. I love the um, last comments, recent comments around innovation and how are we using technology more broadly. I uh, had the chance to see a, a new app that um, a colleague was developing that was really looking at, the, at, at a way of incorporating grandparents through almost a Facebook um, a Facebook 
or a FaceTime type of application that allowed grandparents to read with their grandchildren even if they were distant and far apart. All that to say, I think there's lots of ways in which technology can be a real enabler, both around education and personalized education and the environments that we're helping our children with, but also I think people talked about really creative ways in which one could be incentivized to think about how you use technology as an enabler, both at communities as well as personal levels around health and health behaviors. Um, the role of communication. It came up in a variety of different ways that our language and how we uh, use language to, to reach different audiences and to think about how we're talking about the culture of health. And I think a lot more needs to be done in the whole area of how are we communicating and how are we using communication as a way of crossing uh, boundaries and working in this much more integrated way. Um, urban planning came up several times and I think that as we think about the built environment and how much we're thinking about that and how important environment is for health, more bringing urban planners into the mix as we think about health and, and, and health equity, uh, I think there's a huge role that we haven't, we haven't really thought about as, as um, closely. And so um, I think those were just, you know, again, some of the thoughts and some of the things that really struck me. But when I, again, and I said this a little bit in the um, discussion about the report that we did, when I think about this and step way back, I think that at the end of the day, this is really about how do we work better across boundaries. Health has always been a fairly, and somebody said this earlier, fairly vertically. We think about health in a very vertical way. And so many other um, social issues are much more horizontal. Understand the, the fields that touch on their fields a lot more than health does. And I think we need to do a better job of that. And um, one other, sorry, one other thing that I thought about, and I'm looking at Stuart there, policy and looking much more at policy and policy uh, and, uh, analysis and how policies in adjacent fields impact health and vice versa. Uh, I'd like to see some cross policy uh, uh, analyses that really do look at how are our policies in education? How are our policies in transportation? How are our policies in agriculture? How are our policies in, so, in, in civil uh, rights and justice impacting health? And do some rigorous policy mapping so that we can really think about what are the implications of policies, either uh, already policies already in place or policies that are being created, and what are the intended or unintended health consequences? And at the end of it all, I. Um, I go back to the fact that I think that if we truly put communities uh, at the heart of this, then I think we are going to have the kinds of outcomes we want. And I think that people's comments about policies and equalizing how we empower communities, how we listen to communities, and how, how we make sure that what we're doing is really based on what communities want and not what makes us feel good, I think we're going to be in a, in a much better situation. So I, I hope that we will build on the report that I had the uh, opportunity to be part of, of and really think about how do we put in place some of these incredibly rich uh, suggestions and discussions that we had today, because I think there's such a wealth of, of um, information here and such a wealth of enthusiasm. I think that in five years from now, I hope that we'll all look back and realize that this was part of the start of this real movement for a culture of health, and that once you get a movement started, it's hard to turn it back. So thank you.